Barnet Football Club. When most football fans hear that name, they automatically think of Underhill. The iconic stadium with its sloped pitch, atmospheric east terrace and big moments forever etched into the history books. Opening in 1907, Underhill, which sat on the site behind me, was home to the Bees until it was ripped away from the club in 2013. Chairman Tony Cleanthu had wanted to move ground since the 1990s because of poor facilities, but planning permission for locations across Barnet were repeatedly declined. On top of this, Barnet Council had caused several issues over land, wanting to relocate club offices and staff, remove spectator toilets and parking, and also get rid of disabled facilities at Underhill, among other things. After many battles, it seemed that Barnet would have to move further away than they had hoped, to another part of London, Edgware. The Bees moved here to The Hive in 2013, a 6,000 plus capacity stadium in Edgware. The site was first built on in 2003 as a new home ground for nearby side Wildstone FC. However, when work was around 30% complete, one of the project's largest investors liquidated, leaving Wildstone with insufficient funds to finish the build. That's when Barnet stepped in, in 2006, buying the land off of the council to use it as a training ground. But several years later, when the club were forced to leave Underhill, after failing to find another site as a last resort, the club built their new stadium here. It was very split, it was very divided. So there was a group of fans who very much felt that we should have moved, felt the ref uh, that we should have had some kind of referendum from the, you know, the chairman. But there was a few of us, a lot of fans who came, felt that we just got fed up with constant, you know, being pushed back by the council, yeah. and it just became a just a, a big issue. You know, it just just became a bit of a slog. So the feeling was here would be a fresh start, new stadium. Um, but ultimately, I think what's happened is people realised it just didn't have the same atmosphere of Underhill, even though we did try and make it work here at the Hive. Underhill was eventually demolished in 2018, clearing space for a new secondary school. As for the Bees, their time here at the Hive has been mixed. On the one hand, it's been successful, with promotion to League Two coming in 2015 and playoff campaigns in the National League last season and most likely this season too. For the most part though, apart from the last two seasons, it's been relegation scraps in the National League and poor performances. On top of this, attendances have dwindled too. The Hive is a very difficult stadium to get to, especially from the High Barnet area, compared to Underhill's short walk from High Barnet Tube Station. A lot of fans have moved away because they just don't like, don't feel the same atmosphere here, they can't walk to games. If you look at this, the, the bus transport, you know, is not the greatest between Barnet and, the, and Canners Park yeah. or Queensbury. So a lot of fans find that on a weeknight, uh, like Tuesday night fixtures, it's just a waste of time. So they, you know, it takes them ages to get here. And on a Saturday, it's just not the same. They can't go and go have a drink in the same pub they drink with their friends, come to the games. Back in Barnet, the local area around Underhill has struggled too. Shops on the high street are shutting, there are too many charity shops filling spaces, and the buzz around Barnet has disappeared. If you walk around Barnet at the moment, there's loads of boarded up shops that are near the sort of the ground end of the of the high street. A lot of fans used to go and have something to eat in the high street and then walk their way down the hill to the games. We've lost a couple of the pubs. There's one pub struggling for its life. So, and I was talking to one of the um, uh, the barbers, which is right near the ground, and they were saying that basically it's just flat around there. However, things could now be changing. On one unsuspecting Monday afternoon in February this year. Tony Cleanthu released a statement announcing plans to return to the club's original borough. Well, I mean, I was in dead shock. I mean, I, look, I, I've got, I've, I was a secretary of the Sports Association for a little bit, and he did say behind closed doors that he was always keeping an eye open, but I kind of felt like it maybe was paying a little bit of lip service. But on the day it happened, my phone just went mad. Everybody was buzzing that day, and the WhatsApps went mad, the forums were mad, Twitter went mad. It was, I've never seen Barnet fans so connected on, on, you know, uh, on one topic. I think it's fair to say that from the day that our chairman, Tony Cleanthos, left Barnet, his, his 
you know, main goal was to get back there. Mm. So that's how long it's been going on. He says that the club have drawn up plans to end Barnet's 10-year exile in Harrow and to move to a site here just south of where Underhill used to sit. In the chairman's statement, he has said that he'll fund the building of the new Underhill Stadium, which will have a six to 8,000 capacity and several areas to help the school next door too, including a child drop-off zone, helping to alleviate the morning traffic. We met with Barnet Council here um, about a year and a half ago. Um, they came in, all various officers, leader of the council, um, and you know we just had a frank conversation with them and, and told them what we wanted to do. The, the main guidance we got from them was that in order to move this forward properly, we should enter a pre-application process with the council. That's why we brought in WSP. I mean, they are expert planners in this field, and it's for them to crack on with it. And ultimately, listen, it is down to the council. We will do everything that we possibly can to tick every box correctly, and then it is just down to whether the council have an appetite to have us back in the borough of Barnet. It will generate a lot of local business, uh, it will generate job opportunities within the club itself. Now it is going to be a difficult journey and Barnet Council won't be easily persuaded as this land is part of the Greenbelt. However, they do seem a lot more willing and cooperative than they did all those years ago in the early 2010s. Uh, you know, they, they built a school on Greenbelt, yeah, if you like. So as far as we're concerned, uh, they've already allowed building to happen on what is essentially um, classified as, as Greenbelt. Also, there's a lot of pressure on the council to make this move happen. The footballing world has come out in support of the plans with thousands donating, supporting and sharing this news. Along with this, a campaign called Bring Barnet Back has been set up. They're selling merchandise, have raised over £5,000 for adverts and are spreading the word across the area. You can find out more about their campaign at bringbarnetback.com. So I think what, we, what we're trying to achieve to start with, so the first part of it was about the sort of like, you know, what do you ever miss by not having the stadium there, the nostalgia, the memories that people have. We've been, loads of podcasts have, have supported our campaign. They've retweeted, they've commented. We've had authors, we've had musicians, uh, we've had all sorts of people have like shown the love and, and also, you know, shared their memories. But the other thing that we're trying to show is that Barnet, is a community club and it needs to be in its community. Yeah. It's been absolutely unbelievable and I think I, I expected it but not on the scale that it's turned into. Yeah. When we hear from supporters, you know, time after time about, you know, we want to be in Barnet, you think maybe that's a small minority. But it's enormous. I mean, they've raised, you know, five grand and I think they made uh, sales, 1,500 quid's worth of merchandise sales yesterday, which was phenomenal. I bought um, some badges as well. I should have put one on for this, I know, I'm sorry. We're doing everything that we can and with the support of the community, of Barnet supporters, of the Supporters Association, um, you know, it's, it's giving us that sort of 12th man, if you like. As Barnet fans, we have to get out there and we have to make, a, make our voices heard, okay? If we don't go to our councillors, if we don't speak to the council, if we don't put our posters up, if we don't get posters out across the borough, Okay, it'd be very easy for the councillors to bat that off and not have to bother going through it. If a move is to go through, the Hive will remain as a stadium and will be rented out instead. The Hive will stay as a stadium facility. We're an international training venue. There's a lot to the Hive. We've got obviously a load of artificial football pitches. Yeah. Uh, we've got the stadium itself. We've got event spaces. We've got a medical centre. We've got a gym. We've got a Starbucks. So it's a brilliant site where, because we're so close to Wembley, when international teams are playing England at Wembley, they'll use us as a mini training camp site. So, uh, you know, we've had everyone here. Mm. Even England have trained here. We've had the Lionesses recently, uh, Italy, Germany, Brazil. I think we're the biggest football centre in Europe. Oh. Uh, we've got uh, planning in for another couple of uh, full-size artificial pitches in one of our um, areas, more over to the Whitchurch Lane side that should make us probably the biggest football centre in, in the world. Whether this move will happen or not is up to Barnet Council and to the local people in the end. However, this return to Barnet for Barnet will rejuvenate the local area, help out local businesses, increase attendances, and for me, simply has to happen. Bring Barnet back.